Okay, we're here with my patient Luke, and he's had two surgeries on both shoulders. The most recent one is a bicep tendinitis on this one, and a slap repair. But now he's developed, unfortunately, a tear in his infraspinatus. So it's on his left shoulder, but I'm going to show him my right because I've got a model here, but it's a right shoulder. So if I look at his right shoulder, that's his infraspinatus here. Okay, there's his shoulder. He's got a tear on this tendon here. So there's infraspinatus muscle. It's an external rotator. You see how big that is? There's the teres minor, the other external rotator. The tear is sitting in here. Now that's created quite a bit of weakness of tendinopathy in that, right? And then he's got trigger points through the muscle. So if I take that muscle off, you imagine it's sitting on there like that. Now it's on his left shoulder. So he's getting a bit of mechanical pain in the front of his left shoulder. Nothing wrong with the front of the left shoulder, but because he's had that bicep tenodesis, he's lost the anchor in the front, okay? So this bicep tendon here, okay, that point there, he's had it screwed in, okay, and then snipped off. So there's a little bit of play in the front of his shoulder. His ball in the socket wants to sort of creep forward a little bit. And the reason for that is, one, it doesn't have that permanent anchor there in the front, but two, the infraspinator that's at the back, that's usually holding it back and keeping it external rotated in the socket is not very good because it's got a flap here and it's going to tend off these. So he's, had, he's getting mechanical pain in the front because when he moves his shoulder and presses, does too much of that. So we're going to fix that by getting infraspinatus better and better. And already he's lost the pain in the front because he's just worked on his infraspinatus, but now we're advancing it. So he was doing 45 degree external rotation. So doing work on the external rotation in that position, okay, he's got great at that. We need to make that harder. How do we do that? We're gonna go right above head because he's now got full movement. So if you show me your movement for me. He's got all the way up, pain free. His scapula is working better, okay, his supraspinatus, his, sorry, his serratus is working better. He's got better movement. He can go all the way up, no problems. So we can do external rotation above 90 degrees. Problem there for me, Luke. So, what we've got him doing is going all the way up to 135. So he's above that 90 degree mark, all right? So he's going to train external rotation in this position. So from there, we want the anchor point down low, all right? Because when he comes down forward into internal, we still want a downward drag from the external rotate. So from that point, go through that for me, Luke. He's got to work through range as long as it's pain-free, and keep his elbow sort of in one spot. Because the biggest thing he's got to work on and think about, is not just, oh, I've got to get my external rotator better, I've got to get my infraspinatus better. The whole rotator cuff has got to work as a unit to control and keep the ball in the socket nice and snug. So he's got to learn, the best thing, well, you think you can think about is, can I keep this point of elbow fixed in mid-space when I do it, all right? Then he knows he's getting the ball rotating in the socket nicely. The rotator cuff is doing a job as a unit, not just one thing. So he's doing external rotation, but the rest of the rotator cuff's working as well to keep it in the socket, if he focuses on that. What he doesn't want to do is, when he goes external rotation, he doesn't want to drop down. So he doesn't want his elbow to do this sort of thing. That's not going to work, okay? He's got to learn stability. The other thing I've taught him is to try and keep his shoulder blade Really, or think about a shoulder blade really fixed in one spot, okay? So when it's above 90 degrees like that, the shoulder blade has moved out of position, which is what we want. But he's still gonna try and learn how to keep in that position. So he's working constantly on serratus at the moment, okay? That muscle is working and holding him up there, okay? He's also working on a bit of trap. He's also working on a bit of lower trap, okay, to keep in that position. Now if he's Isometrically working here, he's learning about shoulder stability at the same time, right? So that's one thing he's doing, and he's not too bad at that. And he's got to do it on both sides because he's had surgery on both, all right? Then we get him to shoulder press because the moment he's also the other thing, he's also had a bursitis in there, and he's had an injection. So we don't want the bursa immediately inflaming up doing heavy shoulder press or even just any loaded shoulder press. So I don't want to put a weight in here just yet. He will get to that. But we want to go through the shoulder press movement and get him going on that. What we're going to do, put the band same spot. He's now sitting in from 90 degrees, external rotation. All right, he's sitting in there. He's got to try and maintain that. So go push above here. And this is what he was talking about before with fatigue. So he doesn't get any anterior shoulder pain, 
doesn't get any pain in the bursa. All he's feeling is this, just working hard. Of course, we don't want to flare it up. We don't want to go so hard that it flares it up. But this movement here is really important for him because he's returning his shoulder blade, um, moving above head. He's getting back into his shoulder press, but he's learning to do a higher work rate in his infraspinatus and his external rotators while he does that because that's what he's going to need. He's going to need really good shoulder blade, external rotator cuff when he presses to not get impingement in his shoulder again. All right? I'll give him a break. Go to the other side. <laughs> it's so hard. And if you do this one at home, you know, you, the patients will notice, oh my God, I feel it through here. It is a hard thing to try and press overhead with a load that's going forward all the time. But this will be amazing for him. And as long as his shoulder blade control is good, as long as he gets the 60 degrees of scapular abduction, when he gets 180 at the top, he needs that there, then he's going to be fine. He's going to be clear of impingement with that. And if I'm looking at this way, if you can see, his elbow is in line with his ear, and he needs to get hand directly over shoulder at the top. So that's what we're working on with him to advance what he's been doing external rotation-wise, get him towards this shoulder press movement, which he wants to do and helps him with his strength, without recreating any pain in the front or re-flaring anything up, fixing anything else along the way. See you next time.